The Sounds of the World, brought to New York for one night. And from there, perhaps to a club or concert hall or a festival near you. Jeffrey Brown reports on the phenomenon called Global Fest for our arts and culture series, Canvas. likely heard the marimba before, but not played quite like this. This is the Mexican band Son Rompe Pera, who've created a distinctive blend of, as the t-shirt says, cumbia, the traditional Latin American music, and punk. And here they were recently in what is for them a very unusual setting, New York's Lincoln Center. Jesus Gama is one of three brothers in the band. To come here and play and be seen by different people from all over the world, that's something unique. For a street band to arrive in these places is something very, very good, especially in Mexico, where it's difficult to get support. International musicians being seen and supported to tour in the U.S. It's what the annual Global Fest gathering is about. The audience is a mix of the general public and, crucially, more than a thousand representatives from performing arts centers around the country, eager to learn about new acts and, if the stars align, bring them to their audiences back home. It's a unique place because you have an audience that's mixed with arts professionals and the general public, and you don't know who's who. So you don't know who you're sitting next to, but they might be booking a major festival or concert hall anywhere across the country or around the world. I saw Marchita <laughs> here. Oh, how was it? Isabel Sofer co-founded Global Fest 20 years ago with Bill Bregan and Shanta Thake, who's also chief artistic officer here at Lincoln Center, which has now given Global Fest a new home for the festival. It began, says Sofer, after 9-11, amid fears of isolationism, a way to ensure more Americans are exposed to global culture. We know that music plays a key role in people's understanding of the world, and we take that really seriously. And we do want to challenge both audiences and presenters, and to just think more critically about where these people are from. This year, chosen from among hundreds of submissions, they came from countries including Morocco. The ecstatic singing and playing of the all-women group, Benat El Huariat joined by Algerian-American dancer Esra Warda. And Spain, singer Maria Jose Yergo. And they represented varying styles of music, like that of the New York Arabic Orchestra. and spreads across three stages with overlapping performances, allowing the audience to move around, hear all 10 acts, and for professional arts presenters to do some serious business. Jamila Derrier is director of the Fine Arts Center at the University of Massachusetts in Amherst. It's critical as a presenter who isn't in a, a major market. I think that um, to be able to fly to Marrakesh and then <laughs> France and um, Mexico City is a, bit, you, is, is a bit outside of my budget range. Yeah, as so, much as you might want yeah, to. Yeah, as much as I, but yeah. the ability to just, you know, fill up the gas tank and drive down to New York for a few days to be able to see these artists in person, ex not only experience their music, but the impact of their music on a Western audience is invaluable. We started with one artist. Yeah. Global Fest is actually a satellite festival held at the same time as a much larger annual convention, the Association of Performing Arts Professionals, or APAP. Here, Daria and thousands of others survey the current music, theater, and dance worlds and meet performers, agents, and managers to set up performances and tours. It's part of the country's performing arts ecosystem. These are the two that are likely to... They also meet other presenters who can band together, in the case of bringing global acts to this country, to defray the often large costs of travel, visas, and other touring expenses. 
So you can go talk to the, the presenter in East Tennessee or the presenter in Maine, and they could be like standing alongside you and say, hey, do you love this guy? I love this guy. Let's do this. Let's bring them to, to our region. And that makes it work economically. You know, the cost of bringing a group from uh, across the world is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> <laughs> There's always at least one act at Global Fest that doesn't have to travel so far. An American musician or group the festival curators believe is ready for a bigger audience. And this year it was the legendary Ingramettes, wonderfully named, powerfully voiced. Started by Maggie Ingram, now led by her daughter Almeida Ingram Miller and based in Richmond, Virginia, this is a group that's been singing in one form or another for some six decades, suddenly getting a new kind of attention. We didn't really realize how many people have been watching what we do. We're still homegrown folks. We're still, you know, Richmond's first family of gospel. True to their gospel roots, Miller says, the Ingramettes are about service, typically singing in churches, community centers, or schools. This, she knew, was going to be different. There's going to be hundreds or a few thousand presenters from oh, around the country. Oh, my goodness. I, listen, I... And, you and know that, I, right? I, I do. I do know that. <laughs> Does that make you a little nervous? You or? know what? We're just going to come to have a good time and to share who we are yeah. and, and to share the music that we bring. If you don't mind tonight, yeah. I'd just like to sing. On stage a short time later, the legendary Ingramettes were sharing away to a happy crowd. And possibly, if Global Fest magic holds, they'll be sharing on a stage near you one day soon. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at Lincoln Center in New York.